Well, 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 it's Big Daddy and it's time for Big Daddy and Friends. So as always, I try to bring on people that, uh, you know, they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. Their, their feet are in the sand. So once again, I outkick my coverage and I have a new friend that's coming on board to share everything she's got going on. And we get to see her every Monday night. Except for the other day, it was on a Saturday night, correct? So let's welcome my friend, Lisa Salters of ESPN, Monday Night Football, and everything else. How are you, Lisa? I'm doing great. How you doing, Big Daddy? It's kind of cold here uh, in Nashville. I feel like I'm still thawing out from Philly the other night because it's cold here in Tennessee as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's been cold up here. And, you know, I was in cold yesterday. I went up to see my brother. Uh, they played... Uh, the Jets and they, you know, they won the AFC East and uh, two years in a row now for them. So now we got to see how far they could take it. And it was during pregame. It was like it wasn't as bad as the the night that we had caught up that Monday night game in but Buffalo. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah, that was that was the worst of the season for me. Yeah, I, I have to say that was the worst of the season for me too. <laughs> I, I've been to a lot of games, not probably not as many as you, but uh, yeah, that was a cold night. Uh, so, but, uh, you know what happens afterwards when they win, it's never cold. Right. <laughs> He's happy and you don't feel a thing. Right. And, uh, and someone said to me yesterday, aren't you cold? I said, nah, man, I got a hat on. I got my sweatshirt on and my brother's going to be happy and everybody's rejoicing. So that makes up for the cold air that's, uh, going on out there. Now, who is your brother? My brother's Jim Salgado. He's a safeties coach. Uh, and he uh, he came from Princeton, and he came, you know, first year, Sean McDermott brought him, and uh, he's mm-hmm. part of that Andy Reid, Steve Spagnola, Ron Rivera tree. Got it. You know, so uh, kind of keep yes. it in the family with those guys. And uh, he's had a he's had a good career up there, and uh, his name's getting out there. So it would be interesting to uh, see what happens, if, especially if they can go far this year. They, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're very proud of him, very proud of him. And uh, he's putting in a lot of hard work, a lot of time. So it's, uh, I'm cheering for him, I, even though I have to be, you know, somewhat not biased. But uh, I, uh, for him, I, I, you know, that's blood, that's family. So I'm cheering right. for him to bring, get his opportunity because not a lot of people do. So right, yeah, good luck to him. Anyway, yeah. So, you know, obviously, uh, you know this better than anybody. Uh, Look, I'm an insurance guy that fell into TV and podcasts and all these other things. So, but I did learn how to do research. So I learned a little bit about you. And uh, one of my favorite things that I read was that you're related to Tony Dorsett. Mm-hmm. And I was the biggest Tony D fan growing up. I was a Dallas Cowboys fan, and uh, I just love watching him play. When I got to meet him, I was like. You know, I don't get starstruck, but I was kind of like, wow, Tony D, you know, that was uh, that was a highlight for me. Yeah, great, great dude. Um, I see him. uh, Well, before COVID, it was like once or twice a year, whenever I was in Dallas for a game or over the summer when we have our family reunions, we have them every year before COVID. Um, So I would see him, uh, him and his family then. Um, I guess the last time I saw him was week three. Uh, this year we had uh, we had the Eagles Cowboys. The first time was back in week three, and uh, I remember telling him, um, "You guys have to stay and come back to the hotel because we were staying right out there at the Lowe's out um, by uh, Jerry World." And yeah. I said, "You got to come to the hotel, like you know, and have a drink with me because I never get to see you guys anymore." Um, and so, as you know, for me, I usually try to get back to the hotel as soon as I can. Um, but I do have to wait for, you know, Levy and Greasy and Riddick to get down from the booth. And <laughs> Tony's wife is texting me, Tony's about to leave. We're at the hotel. He's getting tired and cranky. He's going to leave. Uh, but they stayed. And so we were able to hang out for about an hour and a half. Um, and in fact, Greasy and, uh, and, and Levy hung out with us. We had a big table and hung out for a while. And all these people were coming over wanting to take Tony's picture, get their picture taken with him. And and everything. So he he is absolutely, um, you know, a king in Dallas. Uh, everybody loves TV, um, but uh, he's everything that you see. Just a um, you know, great guy, um, good person, and what a f- phenomenal athlete. Like it was, 
you know, for me to be able to say, you know, every time I watched as a, you know, when I was younger, like, that's my cousin, that's my cousin. I remember going to school, you know, after that 99 yard run he made on Monday night football mm -hmm. and, you know, my classmates were like, that's not your cousin. Like it is like, he's got to be related to somebody, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he's related to me. Um, so what I also like is that he tells people, he goes, when you're on TV, Lisa, I tell people, that's my cousin, that's my cousin. Uh, so I, you know, that's really cool too. Uh, family pride and honor at the same time, both ways. Yeah. You know, that's great. So just for the uh, viewers and listeners that may not know, uh, we always try to give a little history. So you obviously, uh, and I learned something new again, you played basketball at Penn State? I did. Uh, I was a walk-on at Penn State and um, I played point guard. I, I was a backup, so I didn't play a whole lot. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I, you know, I love my time at Penn State and love my time uh, being a lady line. Well, that's, uh, I, I've been, uh, I was up to uh, Penn State a few times. I played football at Maryland and uh, we didn't have too many successful trips up there. We, uh, in my tenure, we had not, even after I was gone, I think it was like a 19 or 20 year run that we hadn't beaten them. So I think finally someone, I forget what class broke the record. But, oh. <laughs> Yeah, we used to be pretty good. I don't know what we're doing now, but uh, we used to be pretty good. Yeah, no, well, they're... We'll be, right. we'll be all right. Yeah, they're still, you know, they're in yeah. the Big Ten, so it's not easy, you know. You know, my alma mater's in the Big Ten, too, and we shouldn't be there, but that's another story for another day. And uh, It but seems like it changes every year, like, who's what? <laughs> you know, it changes every year. Well, yeah, it's like it's changing again. I think you got teams uh, from the Southwest Conference or leaving. It, isn't Nebraska in it too, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think that, that that makes no sense to me. Right? Oklahoma's leaving to go, uh, or Texas is going into the SEC. Right. Like, yeah. What? Yep. Why? Yeah. Especially in that meat market, you get the, there's three teams there: Alabama, Georgia, and you know, yeah, uh, a And M. It's like why why do you want to go in there and get beat up? I guess it has to do with the money and the exposure. Yeah. You know? Yep. You're so right. uh, anyway, that's uh, I would I would say that's a conversation for smarter people than me. <laughs> I just I turn it on on Saturdays. Who make more money than us? Who have more uh, <laughs> at stake than us? Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We so, just want to watch the games. We don't care where they play. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I Listen, I love watching the games. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I, I guess now I'm a little more biased now to Monday Night Football because you're on there now and we're friends. And, you know, I go back with uh, Greasy from his days at Michigan. So mm -hmm. when, you yep. see him next, when you see him next time, you're going to say, hey, I had a long talk with Big Daddy about you. I bet okay. you his eyes will curl. <laughs> All right. You know, but uh, – him and Greeny, I finally met Lewis uh, that Monday night. It was great to uh, connect with him. And I know his dream is to be a GM, and I keep telling him I hope he does it. Yeah, He deserves it. I mean, you got, you know, one of the biggest things that uh, I see as an outsider sort of, you know, when you see people that get jobs that really don't belong there. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, he's a proven guy. Yeah. Been he proves it every week. He proves it every week Yeah, <laughs> on our air. So, I, you know, Greeny says, oh, Big Daddy, you know, I don't want to let Lewis leave, but, you know, he deserves a shot, and he does. He should, and I hope, you know, especially today being Black Monday, uh, I'm sure yeah. there's going to be some opportunities there. He just needs the right uh, advocate or person pushing for him. But uh, You're saying Le you, Levy? Levy doesn't want to let him go? Or? No, no, yeah, yeah. Steve, I mean, Steve, yeah, Levy doesn't Levy. want to let him go. He's like – he goes, man, I would hate to lose him, but, uh, you know, yeah. I know he deserves a shot and, Absolutely. you know, he should, you know, he should be there. So uh, thanks for correcting me too. No, but, no problem. Uh, you're the pro, so I'm learning. Uh, but anyway. Well, you so, know everyone, so I wasn't sure if you actually met Greeny or yeah, yeah, no. since you know everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone at ESPN that knows um would 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 hate to lose Lewis, you know. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. he he does his, you know what it is. And when I saw him, I I was joking around. I'm like, he even walks like a GM, you know. He's got that yeah. that look and that, yeah. and, you know, whatever. So again, I hope he does get it. But uh, so anyway, you get you're at Penn State. You're playing basketball. So what leads you into the life of sports? Even though I know you played it, because you know some people play sports and then all of a sudden they go left instead of going right, meaning like towards sports. So what led you into the 
communications or wanting to be a reporter kind of deal? Yeah, I, I never wanted to be a sports reporter. Uh, I, I majored in broadcast journalism at Penn State and uh, wanted to be a news reporter. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't didn't consider sports to be like uh, even as an option. Um, for me, it was, you know, I, I saw the news and I wanted to be like that. I wanted to be like the news reporters, you know, that you see on your nightly news. And so I did that for 12 years when I got out of uh, school. I worked for ABC Network News. I uh, started in local television, did that for seven years, and then went to the networks, worked at ABC, was based out in L.A. for five years, covered all kinds of big stories like the Oklahoma City bombing, O.J. Simpson trials, one and two. Mm -hmm. um, TWA flight 800, uh, the Matthew Shepard murder. So as you can tell, like I was doing a lot of heavy stories that, you know, they were big and impactful, but they were always depressing. Yeah. And after like five years, I started thinking, boy, like it really is hard to go to work every day. It's the news is always just so heavy. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, ESPN had been trying to get me to come over to do sports for like two years. And I don't know why I resisted. I guess I do know why I resisted because I thought real journalists do news. They don't do <laughs> sports. <laughs> That's just silly. Uh, you know, I have this education. I, I don't want to do sports. That's, you know, frivolity. And so I, I resisted for two years. And finally, I said, all right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Just because I was so, you know, so beaten down by the heaviness of hard news that I said, yeah, sure, I'll give it a try with the agreement that if I didn't like it, that I could go back to news because ESPN and ABC are both owned by their parent company, the Walt Disney Company. So it was kind of a lateral move within, you know, Walt Disney. I left news, ABC News, and I went to ESPN. So I said, if I didn't like it, I could go back to ABC News. And they said, yes. And um, I, I don't know why I waited so long. Like I, I never looked back um, the opportunities that I had uh, you know, since I've been at ESPN and I've been at ESPN now almost twice as long as I was in news. Um, so it's just been an incredible ride. Um, and I wish I had made the jump, made the switch sooner. Well, you know, it's, uh, obviously it's groundbreaking because you do incredible work and, you know, well, you. You're, you're, you're there every Monday night and, you know, you're on point and, and it's, uh, it's got to be, how do I say, other women should be looking at this, looking at you and looking at the great work that you do and saying, wow, you know what? She's doing it. I should do it. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like being a, a teacher and a mentor at the same time, if I want to. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you saying that. And I do appreciate it every time. Uh, you know, women and, and young, uh, young women and, and students and girls uh, in, in school tell me that, uh, like, I'm a role model, someone that they look up to, aspire mm -hmm. to be like. Um, and um, it's, it's humbling, too, uh, to have people looking at you in that way. Um, I would say earlier in my career, I kind of resisted that a little bit because I never wanted, I had a little Charles Barkley in me, like, I didn't really <laughs> want people to look at me as a role model, just... I'm just out here trying to, you know, do my job as best as I can. And, you know, don't try to be me, just, you know, do you. But, you know, now I, I've kind of embraced it more, the older that I've gotten. Um, I understand it more, I'm not as, you know, not as uh, frightened by the fact that people are looking at me all the time and, uh, you know, inspired by what they think uh, I'm doing right. And that's what's humbling about it is that, people think that you're doing something right. And, you know, I never set out to be um, anything but just good. I just wanted to be good at my job. And um, to think that here we are, you know, all these years later, 30, 33 years later, uh, and I'm still here, um, it means that I am doing something right. Um, so, you know, people often ask me, you know, what am I most proud of um, in my career? And I always, uh, you know, I have to say that you know, I didn't really think about it until the last few years because I know that I'm getting, you know, closer to, you know, the the back nine of my career. Uh, that, no, you gotta be, you got to think like Tom Brady. You're not yeah, done. Yeah, just keep going, right? But what I'm most proud of is that I'm still here, is the longevity. 
you know, you, you know this, that television is a very fickle industry. Uh, mm -hmm. You can be hot one minute and people, you know, they're done with you the next. I think of so many people that were like stars, you know, and then I, I, they're not even on television anymore. Um, so the fact that I've been able to last for 33 years in television, um, you know, that's, I think, what I'm most proud of. Well, you know what? You lead by example. I mean, you're the, like you said, it's uh, longevity is the key and being good is also the key. So you've got both things going on. And it's, uh, you know, as your new friend, I have to say I'm very proud and, uh, and it's it's great to watch. You Thank know? you. Thank so, you. Um, and, you know, it, it's funny because, uh, you know, as they always joke around, some guys do and some guys don't. But, you know, OK, it's a man's world. Right. But no, it's really not. And and the one thing that uh, I've learned, and I learned this by accident, it's kind of funny. I'm going to share something with you and everyone on here. Some people may know, but I got involved. Um, I became an ambassador to a women's empowerment group. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, it was a friend of mine who uh, asked me to become a part of it, get involved. And then not knowing I was nominated by the United Nations uh, He for She movement, um, I was a nominated ambassador. <laughs> and it was right before COVID. So very cool. Uh, I found out, but you know, there was like no, I didn't meet anybody or, you know, they sent an award and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's, it's important that, uh, you know, people have an understanding that there is equality and there should be equality in all facets of life. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, uh, so that's, uh, that's why I also, I can sit there and watch and not be, uh, be in awe, so to speak you know, and, and say, wow, okay, she's kicking butt. She does it every, you know, in front of, I don't know how many millions of people she got her game on. So good for you. And it's, uh, like I said, it's very, uh, very, uh, commendable. So again, appreciate it. I salute, I salute you as Terrell Davis would say. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so now what else you got going on? Anything else you're looking to do or, you know, want to do or, you know, who knows? You know? Uh, well, I do. I cover the NBA as well. So, um, you know, as soon as the Pro Bowl is over, um, I'll be jumping right into that um, on our, our our games on ABC. So mm -hmm. on our A package Saturday nights with, um, you know, Hall of Famer Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy. Um, they're like my second family. Yeah, uh, I have my Monday night family and I have my NBA family. Um, and they're very different, but you know, I miss them. Uh, I miss them both when, when we're not in season. So I'm looking forward to getting back with my guys on the NBA side, um, and, uh, and covering some hoops, uh, you know, we'll go all the way through the finals and, uh, you know, that's always, you know, I feel like I have the best of every world. I get to not just both worlds. I get to cover Monday night football. I get to cover the NBA uh, on ABC, and I get to do E60, which is our magazine program. Um, yeah. So I get to host that and do stories for that, which allows me to sit down and do longer form stories. You know, sit down, not, you know, you're not just talking to somebody, you know, Ben Roethlisberger for five minutes after a game, um, yeah. or Dak Prescott for, you know, a minute and a half after a game. You get to sit down in the chair with, uh, you know, whoever it is, Dwayne Wade, um, or whoever for two or three hours at a time on two or three different occasions. Um, you know, we did a story on Travis Kelsey a couple of years ago and we, we interviewed Travis, I think like three times and spent at least, I remember the first interview lasted like four hours. He was sitting in the chair. He's like crying, talking about his life. He's like crying. <laughs> and, um, I remember that for after the first interview, he's like, uh, I, I didn't think that it was gonna, you know, I would be this intense with the whole thing, but you know, just kind of reliving parts of his life and and things that kind of went wrong at Cincinnati where he was um, in in college, and um, th that's, you know, people always ask me to pick which one I like the best, the NBA, the NFL, or E60, and it really is hard. Um, it's like picking a favorite child. I, you know, I don't know. They're different. They're all different. And I love what I do for, for all of them. Um, so yeah, as soon as one is done, I'm on to the next and, and I'm honestly looking forward to, to getting on to the next. I'm looking forward to the NBA. Um, I'm looking forward to E60 
getting back in the studio and doing stories for that. So, uh, you know, I, I really, I really am fortunate in that way. So you're going to be at the Pro Bowl. Yes, I'll be at the Pro Bowl in Vegas for a week. I will be I there. Save well. up some money so that I can roll a little dice. <laughs> I uh, I will be there as well, so we will have to connect. And uh, okay, it sounds good. Oh, Greasy is making me take him to dinner one night, so uh, we've uh, I got to reach out to him. And we were trying to map out our our, our itineraries, so yeah, we this can, will uh, be the first pro. This will be the first one for him, so um, he probably doesn't know the schedule. Um, we we get in on Tuesday, we have a rehearsal. Wednesday, we do the skill show. And then pretty much the rest of the time we're free and clear yeah. until the game on Sunday. It's not like it's a, a you know a real game, so it's we don't do a whole lot of prep. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of responsibilities uh, or obligations. So uh, you can book him on Thursday, Friday, <laughs> oh, uh, Wednesday night because yeah. we tape the show during the day. So you can go out Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, or Saturday. Night. Well, I'll get everybody. I'll fit it all in. And it's funny, I'm double fisting that week. And what I mean by that is um, the NHL All-Star game is there as well. Yes, yes. Bruce, uh, so, uh, Levy told us that, yes. So I think he's going to be doing well, I'll, be, I'll be juggling between uh, both events. Excellent. Um, You're a hockey guy? I am, actually. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you don't know this, and I guess because we haven't had a chance to really chat, but I am an, I'm an insurance agent. That's my business. Mm -hmm. So for the last 30 years, I've insured guys like Brian, uh, guys coming out of college, all the top draft picks, all the guys that are going into new contracts. Okay. Uh, for, like I said, and it's a who's who of NFL, NHL, NBA, MLB. Uh -huh. So I have clients that gotcha. either – Bowl, and I have clients that will be there for the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing uh, – I'm going Sunday to Sunday being there doing both things, you know. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so it's uh, – and I love hockey. I'm, uh, I grew up in Long Island, and Long Island hockey is big. You know, we got three teams uh, here locally that you can – Cheer for or curse out at the same time, <laughs> depending on who you're rooting for. And uh, so it keeps you uh, – that's why when basketball and baseball come around, I'm like this. Because I've already spent so much time on the other two. Right. It's, oh, I don't know if I could do uh, – if, if you had to do what? Football, basketball, baseball, you'd be shot probably oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. That would be all year round. That would be too much. At least yeah, now that's... I get off in the summer. I'm off July. June, June, most of June and July. Got it, got it. So you get to you get to hang out with our mutual friends there, Brian and Jillian down there in the, in the south there, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm actually heading down that way as well. I oh, have yeah? to go. I have to go down for a meeting, and I think it's Thursday. So right now it's fifty fifty. I would come in probably Wednesday, leave Thursday evening. Okay, excellent. I'm going to try to round up, I, yeah, round up and at least grab a drink or something. So, Absolutely. I'll be here. So uh, I'll hit you up. And then, uh, so already here's the fun part of the show. And I always say this because, you know, uh, I get to hand the mic over to you, even though you're used to having the mic. So I know it might be not that big of a thrill, but at least you get to mock me or have fun with me and ask me a question that something you may want to know about me that you don't know. Uh, well, you just told me, um, you know, your tie into sports, which I find very intriguing because I, I was just having this conversation with someone the other day, stemming from the Kirk Herbstreit comments that, you know, players who don't play in these bowl games must not really love football. And I thought, I don't get that. Like, I, I don't understand why they ever did. <laughs> it did play in those bowl games, especially if they were big, you know, draft picks. It just seems like one more opportunity uh, to, to get hurt. So where do you fall in this? You have a client who's, uh, you know, maybe not a star because I feel like if you're a star, absolutely not. There's no reason in the world for, for you to play. Um, where do you fall on this, this argument of, uh, a guy who's going to have a decent career, is going to get a chance to play in the league or at the next level, whatever that next level is. Um, do they play in these bowl games, um, or post regular season games? Uh, just for the fun of it. 
You know what? I'll, I can answer this two ways. Ready? The salesperson that makes a living, mm-hmm. or I can answer it the uh, civilian that has knowledge of how insurance works. Yes. So uh, it, it's a case by case. You know, obviously, you uh, you saw the kid at uh, Mississippi uh, at Ole Miss, the mm-hmm. quarterback that went down, and right away everyone said. Oh, I hope he's insured. I hope he's insured. I hope he's insured. But why did he play? It, it's an individual decision. I mean, when I sit down, I, I get college kids, their parents that call me up, and we go over this A to Z. And and look, it's a way for you and your son to go to sleep at night knowing that you have some sort of protection. God forbid something happens that doesn't allow you to play for instance, football. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you have to be in your deathbed or you have to be paralyzed or you can never walk again. You can go and do anything you want except play football. If that injury does not allow you to play football and you're insured, you have career-ending insurance, then you get compensated. Right. I mean, but there's so many different scenarios that are involved because uh, – the school's trying to keep a player from leaving. Right. You know, they all of a sudden say, hey, we're going to take care of this. And, uh, and again, we would need another half an hour. We'd have to do an E60 show right. to explain all the things that come with this. Right. But, again, it's a peace of mind, and uh, every, every case is, is, is a, it's a case by case. It's a decision that the parents and the player make, and uh, some go with it and some don't. And you'd be shocked at something, you know, I, I've done a fair share of the biggest names out there, mm-hmm. but you also be shocked where they'll say, no, I don't need it. I don't want it. And uh, sometimes it's free in, in certain occasions without giving out the formula to have that sort of protection. Mm-hmm. You just have to say, I want it. I need it. Mm-hmm. And uh, how do I get it? You know, and, and again, everyone has a misconception that you have to be in your deathbed. Right. or paralyzed to collect on it. You and I both know this, that guys that used to get knee scopes 20 years ago would be out for a year. Mm-hmm. Guys that get a knee scope in September, some of them are back in November playing right. because right. the way medicine and technology and, and, and everything has evolved. You know, so there's that's my answer in regards to uh, insurance and, uh, and why, who, what, and where, so to speak. Yeah. So yeah. and without being, a, like I said, without being a salesperson, everyone knows how to get me anyway, but, you know, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so your clients, though, do, would you t- have them play in bowl games or, or no? Yeah, I, you know, listen, I, 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 how many guys really get injured that drastically that they're going to collect on a policy? Mm-hmm. And most insurance agents wouldn't say that, mm-hmm. but I'll say it because it's the truth. Again, it's just a blanket of knowing that you have something in place right. that really doesn't cost you a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And and God forbid, if you lose out on millions of dollars, you're going to be saying to yourself, scratching your head. And I've known a few guys that um, have done that. And they'll, they'll come back and say, oh, man, I should have did what you said. Oh, I should have, you know. Hey, listen, you know, at the, I don't tell people how to spend their money because when you tell a kid that has no money, all of a sudden, hey, you need to pay a premium of, you know, five, right. six, even ten thousand dollars. Like, you know, but they also need to get the education. And that's what we do. We educate each client on how to get the insurance, how to pay for it, mm-hmm. what the outcome is, well, you know, all the different scenarios that are involved. So uh if a player asks me, yeah, play. Why not? Because you know what? If it's your last game, you're always gonna remember your last game. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't ever want to leave saying, oh, man, if I didn't play, you know. So that's uh, the uh, gospel from Big Daddy, <laughs> so, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, all right. So listen, this has been outstanding. Again, Lisa, I can't say thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to to join us here on Big Daddy and Friends. And um, we like to let everyone know how to follow you, find you. And uh, so if you have any social media that you'd like to share with the viewers and listeners, please let it out. 
I'm, I'm on social media. I have it. I just don't use it a whole lot. Um, but on Twitter, I am at Salters L. Um, yeah. Just don't uh, just don't hold your breath waiting for me to tweet something. <laughs> I don't really I don't really use it a whole lot. Uh, well, listen. Everyone has to follow. Every, no, everyone has to watch Lisa. Yeah. You know, yeah, I prefer you watch. I prefer you watch the games. Absolutely, watch and then. She takes her game from the gridiron to the basketball court. So you want multifaceted talent? There she is. So until next time, Lisa, I'll see you maybe next week or out in Vegas for sure. Sounds great. So, again, thank you for coming on. And for everyone here at Big Daddy and Friends, until next time, we're going to tell you the story behind the stories. We'll see you soon.